Three-dimensional coordinate systems, level four. Many of the formulas established for a two-dimensional coordinate system can be extended to three dimensions. It turns out that many of the formulas that you are used to working in R squared have natural extensions in R cubed. The first of these formulas is the all-familiar midpoint formula. Recall from your previous math classes that the midpoint of a line segment, denoted as P sub M, where M stands for midpoint, joining the points P1 with coordinates x1 and y1, and P2 with coordinates x2 and y2, has midpoint coordinates x sub m and y sub m equal to the coordinates x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2, respectively. In the same manner, the midpoint of a line segment P sub m in space joined by the points P1 with coordinates x1, y1, and z1, and P2 with coordinates x2, y2, and z2, has coordinates x sub m, y sub m, and z sub m equal to x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2, y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2, and z sub 1 plus z sub 2 divided by 2, respectively. Notice how we included a new variable in this case, we included the variable z. For the most part, many of the equations that you were introduced in your previous math classes can be extended to three dimensions by just including this additional variable z. Let's go over an example. Find the midpoint of the line segment connecting the points 4, 3, 1 and negative 2, 5, 7. Let's go ahead and plot these points in a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system just so we can get a visual representation of where these points are located in space. The first point has coordinates 4, 3, 1, so we plot this point by starting at the origin and moving 4 units towards the positive x direction. Then we move 3 units towards the positive y direction, and lastly move 1 unit towards the positive z direction. In the same manner, the second point is plotted by starting at the origin and moving 2 units towards the negative x direction then moving 5 units towards the positive y direction, and lastly, 7 units towards the positive z direction. This problem is asking us to find the coordinates of the midpoint of a line segment connecting these two points. So if you imagine a line connecting these two points in space, we are trying to find the point that is exactly halfway between these two endpoints, hence the midpoint. Also, keep in mind that geometrically, the midpoint divides a line into two equal parts. Finding the midpoint is easy, but really understanding what a midpoint represents from a geometric point of view is much more powerful and useful. When it comes down to it, the coordinates of the midpoints of a line segment is nothing more than the averages or the arithmetic mean of the coordinates of the endpoints. So the average of the x coordinates is equal to 4 minus 2 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. The average of the y coordinates is equal to 5 plus 3 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. And the average of the z coordinates is equal to 7 plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. So the coordinates of the midpoint is equal to 1, 4, 4. All right, let's move along to the next formula. Recall that in order to find the distance between two points, P1 with coordinates x1 and y1, and P2 with coordinates x2 and y2, in other words, the line segment from P1 to P2 in two dimensions, we use the distance formula, which was derived by using the Pythagorean theorem. In the same manner, the formula to find the distance of a line segment in space can be derived by using the Pythagorean theorem twice. Let's go over this simple exercise so we can work out our spatial visualization skills. Say we have two random points in space. Let's call them point 1 with coordinates x1, y1, and z1, and point 2 with coordinates x2, y2, and z2. In addition, let's create a box that includes points p1 and p2 as opposite vertices, where point 1 is located in the bottom corner of the box, and point 2 is located in the opposite top corner of the box. This way, both points have completely different x, y, and z coordinates since these specific vertices don't share a common face on the box. If they did, then we would be working on a boring two-dimensional problem if both points were on the same face. Okay, in order to find the distance between point 1 and point 2, 
which is represented by the red line segment, we need to relate the length of this segment by using the coordinates of point 1 and point 2. Notice that we can actually find the coordinates of the other vertices by using the coordinates of P1 and P2. For example, I'm going to label the vertex directly across P1 towards the positive x-axis as vertex A and label the vertex below point 2 as vertex B. Now, in order to assign coordinates to these vertices, in terms of the coordinates of P1 and P2, we notice the following. The front face of the box contains point 2. This face is parallel to the YZ plane. This means that every single vertex in this plane has X2 as their X coordinate, including vertex A and B. Similarly, the faces on the sides of the box are parallel to the XZ plane and contains point 1 in the left face and point 2 in the right face. This means that every single vertex on the left face will have the same Y coordinate as point 1, in this case Y sub 1. So vertex A will have y sub 1 as its y coordinate, and every single vertex in the right face will have the same y coordinate as point 2, in this case y sub 2. So vertex B will have y sub 2 as its y coordinate. And lastly, the plane that is located in the bottom of the box is parallel to the xy plane. This means that every vertex in this plane has the same z coordinate as point 1. In this case, both vertex A and B will have Z sub 1 as their Z coordinate. Now, in order to find the distance between point 1 and point 2, represented by the red line, I need to somehow relate this distance by using the coordinates of point 1 and point 2. It turns out that we can relate them by using right triangles. Notice that we can form a couple of right triangles in this box. The first right triangle contains the line segment formed by vertex B and point 2 in the line segment formed by vertex B and point 1. These two segments represent the legs of this right triangle, with the right angle being formed with the bottom plane of the box in the line segment formed by point B and point 2. In addition, the line segment formed by point 1 and point 2 represents the hypotenuse of the right triangle. In order to find the distance, we need to know the length of each leg. We can easily find the length of the leg formed by point 2 and vertex B. This is just going to be equal to the absolute difference between the point's Z coordinates. Remember, we need the length to be a positive value, so we take the absolute value of the difference of their coordinates. The distance of the other leg is not as straightforward, and is a little bit more involved. I'm going to color this line segment with the color blue. It turns out that this line segment is also the hypotenuse of another right triangle. This right triangle has as its legs the line segment formed by point 1 and vertex A, and the line segment formed by vertex A and vertex B, with the right angle being formed by these two legs. In order to find the length of the blue line segment, which represents the hypotenuse of the second right triangle, we need to find the length of each of its legs. Once again, we can easily find these. The length of the segment formed by point 1 and vertex A will be equal to the absolute difference between the point's x coordinates. And the length of the segment formed by vertex A and vertex B will be equal to the absolute difference of the point's y coordinates. So now, we essentially have to apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the blue line. The relations are as follows. The length of the blue line segment squared has to equal to the length of the line segment between point 1 and A squared plus the length of the line segment between point A and B squared. We know the length of the line segment between point 1 and A. It is equal to the absolute difference of their x coordinates. And we also know the length of the line segment between point A and B. It is equal to the absolute difference between their y coordinates. Simplifying the expression, we have the following. Now, let's apply the Pythagorean theorem to the other right triangle that has as its hypotenuse the red line, which is ultimately what we are trying to solve for. So we have that the length of the red line segment squared has to equal to the length of the line segment between point 1 and point B squared plus the length of the line segment between point 2 and B squared. From the first application of the Pythagorean theorem, we found the line segment between point 1 and B. This was equal to the following expression. 
and the length between point 2 and point B is equal to the absolute difference of their z-coordinates. Combining them together and simplifying, we obtain the following expression. And finally, it's just a matter of taking the square root of both sides. Doing that, we obtain the distance formula in three dimensions. Between the points P1 with coordinates x1, y1, and z1, and point 2 with coordinates x2, y2, and z2. Notice that the equation resembles that of its two-dimensional counterpart. The only difference is that we included an extra variable, in this case, z, because of the fact that we are dealing with a three-dimensional coordinate system. All right, in our next video, we will go over examples where we make use of this new formula, and we will also derive the equation of a sphere.